The duel in the desert. Jeff Gordon, Jamie McMurray share the front row. They face the setting sun as they come to the front straightaway for 500 kilometers. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing in the desert, boys. into turn one and of course it rained here last night the track's got to be a little dirty and slippery right now jeff gordon gets those five points for leading a lap denny hamlin goes by jamie mcmurray to take second spot away but most importantly a clean first lap yeah, I was really concerned about that because uh, this front straightaway is real narrow. If anybody checks up in front of you, it almost always causes a wreck. Gordon out front, four car single file. Jimmy Johnson heads a pack of traffic for fifth place. Look at that knot led by the 48 car. Truex trying to move, so is Harvick. And Scott Riggs in the 10 backing up just a bit. Yeah, the Scott in the 10 hung up on the outside, and he's uh, he's losing quite a few positions. He might be able to get down there in front of Harvick. Looks pretty good oh, for him. A lot of sparks from underneath Jimmy Johnson's car. And I think right now the track has some pretty good grip because it's very cool. It's starting to get some shade, low air pressure to start this race. That's probably what's going on. But it looks like he's going to lose a position to Martin Trex Jr. in that one car. Well, when we look at the 48 car, look at that nose. It is on the ground. That's where those sparks are coming from. That car is Right, right, right against the racetrack. And when it really starts to spark is when he rolls out of the throttle and jumps on the brake pedal to get in these corners. The nose dives down. And a big concern they have with this car tomorrow is that splitter. And when that thing starts dragging on the racetrack, you wear it out, you lose the splitter. There goes your front downforce. What little you got. Seventh place. Harvick continuing to work on Scott Riggs, whose tires are now coming up to temperature and pressure, and Riggs is coming back forward again. I think as we look into the windshield of these cars coming off turn four, you can see just how hard these cars are to drive. The guys really, really have to fight the wheel with this race car. You see the cars kind of bobble around, and uh, this car just handles so differently than what the guys are accustomed to. Let's see what we got coming off turn four here. Let's look down in old Harvick's car. He's down on the apron a little bit. See that hand kind of juking around? That was pretty smooth compared to last time by. What I see that surprises me, Daryl, is a clear face shield for Kevin Harvick. Not yeah, the dark tinted shield that many of the drivers have. But I think it's like Jeff Hammond pointed out in the pre-race show. The sun has already dipped down behind the grandstand. He's prepared for when we turn nighttime later on in this race. Remember that word I told you last week? Anticipation. <laughs> Have to anticipate. Let's get some late stories from Pit Road, beginning with Matt Yoakum on our pole sitter. Jeff Gordon out front. He has a tinted shield, much like his teammate Jimmy Johnson, the 48. Gordon has really acclimated himself to this whole car of tomorrow. The feel that he needs had two top three finishes, a third at Bristol, a second at Martinsville. A win here would be huge because he's never won here in a Nextel Cup car. Right now, Gordon out front, just pacing himself. Dick Bergman. Well, Jamie McMurray said he doesn't care whether he's driving a car tomorrow or the car of yesterday. He woke up this morning with an upset stomach. He is so focused on getting through today without messing up. He started on the outside of the front row, Steve. Well, Dick Denny Hamlin started third, which is key because track importing is so vital here. Hamlin has only led two races this year, but they were both car of tomorrow races. He led for a total of 309 laps at Martinsville and Bristol. Also, his crew chief, Mike Ford, said he is great on flat, fast racetracks. He won both races at Pocono a year ago. Krista. Well, Clint Boyer has someone riding along with him. His name is Swagger. This was the site of his very first Nextel Cup top five. He won last night's Bush race. And in the new car, his finishes this year, eighth and 11th at Bristol and Martinsville. The COT, Mike, is a-okay for Clint Boyer. Third place is 
is the race as we have a look at Boyer on the inside of Scott Riggs. Gordon the leader, Hamlin second. They're side by side for third, Kurt Busch and Jamie McMurray. And why Boyer is able to fight past his 10 car is his car went through the middle of the corner and he's able to try to complete the pass on the exit of the corner down the straightaway. And we've seen Riggs kind of hung up on the outside, which tells me his car is just pushing up the hill. He can't get to the bottom because he's had a couple of opportunities. Of course, Boyer won the race here last night and uh, that car looks pretty good right now as well. Not the same car, but uh, Boyer's got a win under his belt already this weekend. Casey Kane way up high. Dave Blaney thought he had an opening there. Didn't materialize. There you see Kurt Busch. He's found his way past McMurray. Now Jimmy Johnson goes to work on Jamie Mack for fourth. And based on what we saw in practice, uh, Larry and Mike, you know this, that 48 car looked like he was going to be the class of the field. He's mowing them down as he gets to them moving forward. Yeah, I talked to his crew chief this morning, Chad Canals, and he said, you know what, Larry, we are happy with our race car. What you're seeing is what we're feeling. And then you see the sparks are getting less and less and less as our air pressure builds up. The nose lifts up just a tad. She stops dragging the ground and then she starts hunting like a big old coon dog. Nose down, tail up. Woo! And coming to the front. Jeff Gordon has led every one of 13 laps so far. Denny Hamlin is beginning to close the gap on the race leader. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. 21 laps complete in Phoenix. Jeff Gordon has led them all, but Denny Hamlin closed up to within about eight car lengths of Gordon, and then his march to the front just kind of ran out of gas. That's, you know, Jeff Gordon saw him coming. I believe Jeff picked it up a notch. Lap time say so. He was running 29-10. Now he's 29-9. He's picked up a couple of tenths, put a little gap between he and uh, Hamlin. What about Denny Hamlin, Steve? Mike, he's actually a little frustrated right now. He just told his team and spotter Curtis Markham, he said, I'm, I can't do anything with this car right now. He said, I'm tight in three and four when I pick up the throttle, the gas pedal. And, and this car, what drivers are going to have to come to grips with, it's not how good your car is. It's how good your car is compared to everybody else. Nobody is going to be happy with this car. And that's where, the, that's where the crew chief and the spotter has to be a little bit of a salesman to give him information how he stacks up versus the competition. I mean, you're running second. You chase Jeff Gordon down almost. You're sitting there in pretty good shape. Don't tell me uh, how much you don't like the car. Tell me what we can do to help the car. I mean, that's, that's, that's really what you got to remember. Now, you're 20 car lengths ahead of third place, and he has the advantage of Curtis Markham being a former driver and a good one in the NASCAR Bush Series. So Curtis knows what that driver needs to hear. I love if I, you know, a, a former driver makes a great spotter. There's the gap to third place, Kurt Busch, and fourth place, Jimmy Johnson. Martin Truex in fifth, Kevin Harvick sixth, McMurray, Stewart, Mears, and Kenseth, the top ten. There's the fight for ninth. This is the car I've been watching, especially on the scoring monitor. Matt Kenseth in the 17 car. He started back in 17th, and he's been working his way toward the top ten. And I'm sure their goal in this first run, if we stay green, which will be about 70 to 75 laps on fuel, get as much ground as you can. Robbie Riser and that pit crew will get you a little more when we make a pit stop. But Larry, one of the things I'm seeing with this car, this car tomorrow, the box, I like to call it, is there's really so much difference in the good cars and the bad cars. I mean, we're getting Jeff Gordon and Denny Hamlin are coming up on the rear of the field, and that's in 26 laps. So you're going to go a lap down on a one-mile racetrack in somewhere around 30 laps. That's, that's just hard to believe. And here's Hamlin with a nose looking underneath here. I'm going to make a run at him. Matt? The championship point leader has seen almost his entire full second lead diminish. Now just trying to hold off the 11. Gordon says the car is beginning to tighten up right in the center of the corner, especially down in turns one and two. 
But you know, this is where Jeff Gordon and Steve Letard have gotten a lot better this year. When the car gets off a little bit, they are able to fix it. Last year, when the car get off, he just kept going back. This year, they've been able to make the right changes, right adjustments. But I'm not surprised that cars are starting to get tighter. In other words, the front wheels are sliding more. We're approaching halfway of this run. It's burned the fuel off, so it's gaining nose weight. That hurts the turning of the car. You saw in the middle of turns one and two, Jeff Gordon eased it back to the throttle, giving Hamlin the bottom of the racetrack, and we have a new leader, Denny Hamlin. Now, last week, David Stremme had a good run. Break, a little bit of a rest here. They're going pretty good. This week, Stremme's in trouble. He'll be the first car to go one lap down. Now, what I just heard Mike Ford, his crew chief, uh, Denny Hamlin's crew chief, is those guys are somewhat pitting down there kind of close to turn one. Mike Ford said, I'm starting to see your brake rotors glow. That's another product of this car tomorrow, not turning what these drivers will do. They'll start using more brake to make the car turn, and that actually can make the car push worse because it's going to send the front air pressures up. Yeah, I heard Mark Martin, a number of these guys say, you can't charge down in the corner like we do with our old car. you got to slow it down. How do you slow it down? With the brakes. And that is that just multitude of problems when you have to overwork the brakes. Matt Kenseth trying to finish off the pass for ninth place on Casey Mears. But the National Guard car hanging tough, and now he breathes it into the corner. Kenseth makes the pass. Big red right there behind him. Dale Jr. in 11th, running 29 tens. That's about two tenths of a second faster than the race leader. Yeah, and then we saw his car in practice. It was pretty darn good on the long run. We saw him run a lot of laps, and it's starting to pay off. Jimmy Johnson's in fourth place. He's running 3.2 seconds off the leader, Matt. And Jimmy will tell you, having a great setup here at Phoenix, Mike, is all about balance because turns one and two is slightly different than turns three and four. There is shade right now down in one and two, but Jimmy's biggest hindrance, he says, is down in the center of three and four, where it's just way too tight at this juncture. But his car is one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, now only three seconds back of the leader. I tell you the other thing you got to watch too, Mike is, and Larry, is the front the front wheels. The front wheels are getting darker and darker. That's brake dust, and as that car wears the brakes, that brake dust gets worse and worse, and it can in, in the, that's an indication in the pit when they change tires how much brake you're using. You no, know, I know Matt Yoakum just talked about Jimmy Johnson being one of the faster cars. I've been watching this car right here, Martin Trick Jr., the one car, Dale Earnhardt's teammate from DEI. His lap times look about as good as anybody sitting back there in fifth position, and he's in a great spot right now. He doesn't have a lot of cars behind him or in front of him. He's just clicking good lap times. Well, their other teammate, Paul Menard, he just went a lap down. So uh, the information must not have trickled all the way back to the 15. Caution for debris. Pit road is open. Dick Bergman. Jamie McMurray had dropped back to the eighth position. The car is loose on entry and tight everywhere else. Matt Yoakum. Jeff Gordon had fallen back to the second position. The car too tight, making an air pressure adjustment to try to free it up to Krista. Bush is, Kurt Busch is loose off of four, but tight in both ends of center of the turn. They made an air pressure adjustment. Steve Burns. Denny Hamlin saying I'm just a little tight on the initial throttle pickup, but I am great getting off the corners. Just a small wedge adjustment on that number 11 car of Denny Hamlin's. A uh, little bit of wedge out of the left rear. Nice pickup for two of the children's cars on pit road. Boy, Larry, I saw a lot of brake dust out of a bunch of guys' tire uh, wheels there on that stop. And that's early. I mean, we're 38 laps, and you already got a lot of dust. And trust me, these crew chiefs will be letting those drivers know about it, too. Oh, yeah. A large plastic trash bag had floated out onto turn number four. That is the reason we are under caution. There is Jimmy Johnson, who dropped two spots in the pits, Matt. Mike, an electrical issue for Jimmy Johnson, who has finished second here on two separate occasions. They have changed to the backup battery. He said the first battery was dead. Not exactly sure what their electrical issue is. He's trying to shut off as much electrical stuff inside the race car to conserve the backup battery. Nick? 
Jimmy McMurray's crew had had some terrific pit stops during this week's practice, and they were very optimistic that they were going to give their guy some extra positions on pit road. Did not happen on that first pit stop. Uh, the uh, front changer, Todd Ziegler, his air gun quit on that first stop, so it was very slow on the left front because they had to change that gun. McMurray lost lots of spots. Now, this is quite a tangled web on that 48 car because they're going to have him cut off things that cool him. The other thing, these guys run blowers on the brakes, but we've already talked about all the brake problems. That's going to be the last thing they want to cut off electrical is the blowers that help cool those front brakes. One to go, and we'll go green, so it's time for our at and Singular Virtual Crew Chief question. Last week, we talked about the slow start Casey Kane has had to this season. Will Kane's unfortunate start turn around and maybe today, yes or no? David Andrews wants to know. So text the word crew to 191 on your AT&T Singular wireless phone. Singular is the new AT&T. You know, Free the, pass, Paul Menard, as we get set for the restart. Just the Dodge camp in general is struggling. You know, seven races, they only have one top five finish, Juan Pablo Montoya at Atlanta. So the whole Dodge camp right now has work to do. I don't know. Ganassi's cars have been decent. 40 cars on the lead lap. One lap down are Dale Jarrett, David Reagan, and David Stremme. So first time in prime time for this season, exercise all that nice surround sound you've got and wake up the neighbors as we crank it up on this restart. was a lap down and in the midst of onrushing traffic and got in somebody's way. See Casey Mears in the 25 car there. David Stremme in the 40 car got his first top 10 finish last week at Texas, has moved up to 12th in the points. Uh, got serious problems here. You see the six in the middle there, the AAA car. Jimmy Johnson looking on the inside. Here comes Tony on the outside in the 20. He just loses it. I guess it mostly just trying to stay off of Tony. Tony was on the outside and uh, Reagan just kind of lost it trying to stay off of him. And just nowhere for Stremme and Casey Mears to go. They were in a box. You see him start to ease up. He knows they're probably telling him Jimmy Johnson's there. He and Tony actually make a little contact. Tony did a good job of hanging on to his piece. You could see him fighting it in there. Look at the 17 slide by. Second week in a row, David Reagan is part of an early incident. David Reagan got the worst of it, even though there's a lot of right rear damage on Scott Riggs' car. Reagan's car has broken the splitter on the front end. No, Casey Mirror is able to continue. He split the splitter, which is hard to do to a splitter. Good point. It's already split. Here's how it happened. Reagan trying to stay off of Jimmy Johnson gets up and just into Tony Stewart. That's got to be that they're telling him Jimmy Johnson inside, 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 but they forgot to tell him Tony Stewart outside, outside, outside. You get a feeling with that shot right there. He never knew that 20 car was there. No. Getting ready for the restart. The free pass was Dale Jarrett. 41 cars on the lead lap. David Stremme in the garage from that one, and we get ready to restart. Denny Hamlin. Jeff Gordon, Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick. Now, inevitably, I know we have, this looks like it's going to be all right, but keep an eye on these restarts because we always seem to have an accident on a restart before the night's over. I think it goes back to what you talked about at the top of the show, Darrell. They tend to spin the tires on a restart and they start chain reaction. Well, the, coming off turn four, it's real wide. But when it gets right here to the pit wall, inside wall, it just narrows down to very little room. So if a guy misses a shift or you have to get a better start on, then you hit him and that's when you got trouble. 
Martin Truex holding off Jimmy Johnson as they come off two. But if the dog like Johnson has the preferred line and completes the pass in the low Chevy. Now here's Jeff Burton in the 31 trying to move through traffic. And just remember as we look at Jeff Burton in that 31 car there he is right there the orange car started back in 31st position. He is battling right now Ryan Newman for the 11 position trying to join his other two teammates to get to the top 10. Quite a run for this 31 car but as we mentioned he got a lot of help on his pit stop as well. He really did and, and, and you can see this is why this is a fun track to race on you get in a situation like this and that guy on the inside Ryan Newman in a 12. They could run like that for the next 30 laps. It's just hard to get by anybody here. And give a call to that 99 car right there behind these guys, Carl Edwards. He started back in the 28th position. It's almost like Carl Edwards and Jeff Burton, they've been marching through the field together. Now watch Burton. He's up high. He gets a nice run off that corner. But here comes the 12 right back underneath of him and hold, he can't he can't complete the pass. Meanwhile, Jeff Green, the 66 underneath Carl Edwards in the 99. And right with him, Kyle Busch and back in the 01, Mark Martin. For more on Ryan Newman, here's Steve. Like Ryan Newman said just moments ago, I've been turning okay in the center, but the cars around me are rolling the center better than I am. Thanks. Uh, Scott Riggs has gone to the garage as a result of that crash. And that's a, that's a twofold part. part of that. If you got to use a lot of brake to get the car to slow down, you ride the brake to the middle of the corner. The car won't turn until you get your foot off the brake. So you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. I got to use the brakes to slow down, but the brakes are keeping me from turning. Another good run for Jeff Green. He completes the pass on Edwards and moves his. Best Buy Chevy up into 13th place. As much brake as I, I, these guys are using, I can tell it's kind of like driving on ice or snow. You know when you lock up your front tires and the car just keeps wanting to turn, and all of a sudden you let off the brake and wham, it turns. That's kind of the way a race car is. I got a feeling this is a guy, Matt Yoko talked about him earlier, Kevin Harvick, we're riding with him now in this 29 car. Remember, won both races here last year, but he doesn't have that car. We didn't race the car tomorrow last year, but he's sitting right there in fourth position, right behind Kurt Busch in that two. Mark Martin makes his move and puts the Army car out ahead of Carl Edwards. You know, Mark has raced the Army car five times this year, and four of those five times, his pit crew, led by Ryan Pemberton, have won the Checkers Rally's Double drive through Challenge for spending the least amount of time on pit road. That's an incredible job by those guys to win that four out of five races. They're big. No question, man. I think they've always had a great pit crew, but because the car's performing, now they're getting the notice that they've always deserved. Larry Mack is the total package. You know from being a crew chief in DW, from being a driver, it takes every part of the pod to have a successful operation, and Mark has that now. What he doesn't have, though, is side bite. He says the car is just pushing through the middle of the corner, and then his other issue is just too free on exit. The guy who has the most top fives here at Phoenix Martin right now is just holding his own back in 15. And their side bite is when they go off in the corner and you get right there at the apex of the corner and the car rolls over and bites into the racetrack. That's what those little wings right there, those outside pieces, that's what they create is side force and they're very, very effective. Jamie McMurray to pit road and this is very unexpected. What is that overflow of water? Well, it, I don't know. It looks like it's getting hot, and that's yeah. another thing we don't. It, that's got plastic on the grill. He's picked up a piece of trash. You can see it right there. Saying he is overheating. Boy, he is, and that's not good. But that's another that tape off the top. Tape off the top, guys. Another unknown about this car go tomorrow ahead, go ahead, go ahead. is they're still learning about the cooling on the front end. Two big differences between the car we have been racing. One is that front splitter area that we just saw, which provides much less aerodynamic downforce on the nose. And the other is that big wing Darrell was talking about on the back of the car instead of the blade type spoiler uh, that the previous cars had. Dick Bergman. Uh, Jamie McMurray started in the second position tonight, Mike, and had great, great hope for a good finish but first they had problems with the pit stop and this is the plastic that was on that grill this is one of those windshield tear offs it did about close the grill off so McMurray now instead of a chance to win he's got a chance to see if he can pass a lot of cars 
But, Dick, I think what they have to do is, is make sure Jamie's aware we're only 58 laps into this race. He went one lap down. They've got a good race car. They just need to get themselves in position to get that free pass a little later on in the race, and they should be fine. The cooling systems on these cars today are pressurized, and so it's a little bit different in the system than what you have on your car at home. And they can get hot and lose a little water and, uh, and recover. So uh, he should be okay if he didn't run it that way too long, and I don't believe he did. So that car should be able to cool back down. Denny Hamlin is our leader. If you'd like to know, say, how many miles per gallon these cars get or what crew's having the best day in the pits, you can ask our answer man, Tom Jensen, who's on duty throughout the race. Go to msn.foxsports.com, keyword answer with your questions. 60 laps complete in the Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox. Is Johnny Sauter in the 70 who started 42nd. He's the biggest mover of the race. He's into the top 20. As you watch the battle for fifth rage on the upper left of your screen, here's Krista. Let's start with Kurt Busch. He's lost a couple of positions. We know this is the track of two different turns, and Kurt is struggling running the bottom in the different turns. Turns three and four. Earlier in the run, he gets tight. One and two later in the run. Of course, we're a little bit later now, so he's a little tighter in one and two. Meanwhile, Johnny Sauter all the way up to 20th. That is huge for this team. Remember, they have that much sought after 35th position in points. Johnny Sauter's having a little bit of trouble seeing the fluid that Jamie McMurray laid down on the track is on Johnny Sauter's windshield. Of course, what Chris was talking about, the top 35 and owner points going to each race each week, they're locked into the show. But we talked about Johnny's teammate, Jeff Green in the 66. Here's Johnny Sauter in the 70, both in the top 20. Not surprised, because they pretty much have a huge affiliation with Hendrick Motorsports. Sports. Obviously, Hendrick Motorsports, they've done their homework with this car tomorrow, and I think it's bled over to these Haas teams. Yeah, I think about uh, Bristol the first time we run these cars. Jeff Green finished sixth, so they've got a pretty good package. Jeff Gordon has been no worse than third in this race. As you heard at the top of the show, this is one of only three current Nextel Cup tracks on which he has not scored a cup victory. Right now, Gordon is 1.1 seconds behind Denny Hamlin. Steve? You know, Mike, in a lot of racetracks we go to, we hear the drivers say, I need more forward fight. But Denny Hamlin just said, hey, I can stand to give up some forward fight. I'm starting to get a little bit tight on the exit of the corners. And what you normally fight here is when you put the throttle down, you spin the rear tires. But it sounds like right now, when he puts the throttle down, the rear tires are biting almost too good and it's shoving the front end. Hamlin, the leader by one second. There's the 24 of Gordon. And Kevin Harvick is third, kind of holding pace with Gordon. Matt, he's 1.8 seconds out of the lead. And Kevin Harvick will tell you, a driver's racing shoes are a lot like a baseball player's glove. When you find one, it just has that special feel. You know, in fact, Harvick's racing shoes, his manufacturer doesn't even make them anymore. They make them special for Harvick. But what happened the RCR campus teammate, Jeff Burton, he was a little ill this week. Not from being sick, but from frustration. Apparently, his race-winning shoes from Texas turned up missing. So Burton had to use another pair this weekend, and he was a little upset about it. Well, it turns out, the guy you're looking at right now, Kevin Harvick, snuck and took Burton's shoes and basically held them hostage this weekend. In fact, this morning, they were taking pictures with him to kind of use that as ammunition to even get more of uh, Burton's goat. Matt Kenton tried him on, took pictures of him, Harvick, and a few others, and then right before race time, they took him over to Burton. But Burton had a good idea who had him. If the shoe fits, wear it, right? Fifth and sixth place there, Martin Truex and Kurt Busch. We ride with Jeff Burton, he's in 14th place. Well, will Casey Kane season turn around? A little more than half of you say yes. Remember last year, Casey Kane's number nine won more races than anybody on this circuit. Right now he's uh, hovering back in 23rd position and actually fell back a little bit after that last restart. So they're going to have to do some uh, real work on that car to get it up there if he's going to turn it around tonight. 
Yeah, Daryl, he's about a straightaway from being lapped by our leader, Denny Hamlin, right now. Denny Hamlin is trying to FedEx himself away from this field. He now leads Jeff Gordon by 1.6 seconds, but a lot of racing left to go. Baseball on Fox next Saturday, Red Sox and Yankees renew their rivalry in high definition of the Cubs and the Cardinals face off. It's Fox Saturday Baseball, the game of the week, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Robin Young, the former major leaguer, giving the command for today's race here in Phoenix. Next Sunday will be in Talladega, but right now Denny Hamill, the native of Virginia, out in front leading and has led the most left. Kevin Harvick has moved into second behind Jeff Gordon. Now, earlier in the race, Jimmy Johnson, he's dominated this season with three wins, but having battery problems. Started fourth. Johnson now has fallen back, moved back up to fourth. Rookie David Reagan having some problems for the second straight week involved in an early wreck here, a little rush with Tony Stewart. David Stremme, Casey Mears, Scott Riggs all involved, bringing out a caution. Jamie McMurray, Jeff Hammond, started on the front row but developed problems. Yeah, and this is one of the things we were kind of wondering about as far as the COT car is concerned. He got a windshield tear off on the front nose, couldn't get it to come loose, car overheated, had to make an unscheduled stop. He now finds himself one lap down with a lot of racing to go. But the guy that I'm really watching right now has got to be Kevin Harvick. He dominated here last year at Phoenix, guys, and he's really starting to put some pressure on our leader, Denny Hamlin. Harvick won both races here last year, but as we watch Denny Hamlin from Ward Burton's car, Darrell, getting through traffic here for the race leader seems to be especially difficult. Well, and we heard a little report there that he might be having some brake issue. You're going to use a whole lot more brake trying to get through traffic. I just saw some smoke come out of his car, actually. Um, you're going to use more brake as you work that traffic, and that, be, that could be causing some problems. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, third and fourth, and separated by a car length as they try to lap the 38 of David Gilliland. Yeah, when Denny Hamlin was sitting out there, though, by himself leading the race, had about a two or three second lead, he had nobody to deal with. He could kind of control the entrance of the corner and control how much brakes he was using. And all of a sudden, he caught traffic, and that's when Kevin Harvick was able to pull right up to him. But now Kevin's going through the same situation, and he's falling back some as well. So this is a difficult track to pass on. A lot of room, but there's a preferred line where you got, can carry a lot of speed. You see Jimmy here go the outside of his teammate, but as long as uh, you can slide up in front of him, you block that momentum. Do need to mention that Scott Riggs, David Stremme from that wreck that we saw a while ago, they're still in the garage area. David Reagan has returned to the racetrack 41 laps down in the six car. And as I look down in these cars, Larry, there's not a, uh, there's only a two or three cars that come off turn four that the driver is not juking on that steering wheel big time. These cars really, really hop around a lot as they exit the corner. Well, and this is by far the longest green run that we've had. The last caution we had last restart was well over 40 laps, so we're well past halfway of a run right now. Leader Denny Hamlin, you see him work that steering wheel off the corner. As he crosses the line to complete 89 of 312 laps. Driver eight, which is the title of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s autobiography. Making a pass on Dale Jarrett, who is a lap down. Here's Dick Bergman. And Junior's lap times, Mike, have been extremely good. In fact, most laps, Junior is turning this racetrack faster indeed than the leader is. And he has surely been on a roll. In the last two weeks, Junior has led 233 laps. He started in the 15th spot. He is now in the 8th spot and moving to the front. How about this battle for sixth place? Old friends, Kurt Busch and Tony Stewart who were the cars to beat in the Daytona 500. Stewart clipped the apron, got up and into Bush. But that's all gone and forgotten because there are races to run every week. It just appears that Kurt Busch in that two car, he has a good car for a fairly short run, but on into a run, the car starts to fade a little bit. Yeah, you can see him come off turn four. I mean, the front end just took off. I mean, just sliding the front nose. If a Dodge wins the race, Dodge will give the winning driver a new Dodge Avenger to award to the charity of his choice. 
a nice gesture. I'm sure that's something all of those Dodge drivers would like to accomplish. You know, right now when I look at our scoring monitor and you look at the top nine cars, eight of them are Chevrolets. And we've been talking about this all week long of our first seven races, Chevrolet won six. The fans are wanting to know why. You know, the box of rules that NASCAR has, no manufacturer is going to have a big advantage or disadvantage. We just feel like as a whole that the Chevrolet camp has much more depth with Joe Gibbs racing, Richard Childress racing, Hendrick Motorsports, DEI, maybe than the other manufacturers. It's no different than within a, within a team. It's about the people. And the thing about Hendrick Motorsports, what makes them so special is they share the wealth. They've got the, the, they got the GIN cars that they provide engines for, and uh, it's not just their teams. It's a lot of other teams as well. Jimmy Johnson completes the pass on his Hendrick Chevy teammate, Jeff Gordon. And that swaps third and fourth place around. But as they've been battling, lurking back there, that one car, Martin Truex Jr. in the one, he's been pulling up to him. Now, did Jeff have a little trouble getting past Paul Menard here? Did that play into this, Darrell? Yeah, you see Menard gets a little loose off the corner. Jeff had to back off a little bit. Man, the 17 is just rubbing the wall down the front straightaway there. I'm not sure what created that issue unless he and Dale Jarrett maybe had a little conversation. That 17 was up against the wall coming down the front. Matt Kenseth is in 11th place, the leading Ford in the race right now, Dick. Well, you're wondering, Darrell, Matt Kenseth had just come on the radio a couple of laps before he came off that uh, corner so close to the wall and said, loose off. Yeah. Loose in, too loose into the wall because he was rubbing that baby. But Daryl, don't you feel like as long as your car is turning good in the middle, you can make an adjustment to help that forward bite and tighten that thing up as long as it's not doing two things at one time. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, there's so many things about this car that we're not sure about. Do you move the track bar? Do you put wedge in? You know, we know you're not going to move the blade. You're not going to move the wing. Right. This is only the third race for NASCAR's Car of Tomorrow. They've been developing this package for three years, initially to improve driver safety with improved onboard safety features and a larger driver compartment. They've also tried to help equalize competition. But folks, there hasn't been a NASCAR car with a rear wing since 1971. So this technology is all new to these teams. There you see the battle on the left-hand side of the screen, Kurt Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's a battle for seventh, and then the battle for fourth is we've got caution, debris, caution down for debris. on the speedway. It's in turn one, we're told, and this will be the third caution flag of the day. The first was for debris in turn four. The second for a three-car pileup in turn one. And we're under caution for the third time. A very convenient caution for guys. We've been talking about them a lot during this race, especially like Casey Kane in that nine car. He was within about two seconds of going a lap down. And for all our friends and fans at home, whenever they say there's debris, we try we we show it to you if we can see it, if we find it. Our race leader is Denny Hamlin. He's been out front twice now for a total of 69 laps, Steve. Yeah, Mike, just listening to Denny Hamlin on the radio in the prior laps, he's describing his brakes as pushy. And he just told Mike Ford and Curtis Markham, I'm trying to be easy. I'm trying not to get on the brakes. They feel pushy. The road is open. Here they come. Kenny Schrader stays out on track. He'll get the free pass. Krista? Martin Truex having a great run right now. He just got on the radio and said, Bono, my car is really pretty good. I'm locking up just a bit going into one, and I just need to turn better in the center. It's four tires for Martin Truex. Steve Burns. Chris, a very small adjustment for Denny Hamlin. A little bit of air out of the right front, and uh, let's go to Dick. Junior says his car is pretty good, but he wanted to do a little bit of an air pressure change on the right front to help the car turn better. It's pushing just a little bit. Matt. Kevin Harvick stopping short in his box, so that way he has an easy exit around the 24. Small air 
pressure change for Harvick. Just needed help with some forward bite up off the corner. Hamlin, Harvick, and the two Hendrick cars of Gordon and Johnson lead the charge on pit road. What I like was that 12-9 on Martin Truex Jr. Kevin Mannion in that group. And that is four tires. It's not two. 12.9 seconds. Yes, sir. Wow. We're under the third caution of the day. NASCAR has electronic scoring on pit road and it measures pit road speed for every car. They have a five mile an hour tolerance and beyond that it's like photo radar. No call, no appeal. You get the ticket and that's what happened to Denny Hamlin too fast coming down pit road to get to his pit even though he was the race leader. You must maintain pit road speed. Hamlin was too fast and he will restart at the tail end of the longest line. And remember these cars they do not have a speedometer. They go off the tack rating right before Darrell tried to talk to Jeff Burton there on the pace laps. He gave Scott Miller 4900. That was based on the speed the pace car was running to get his pit road speed by the tachometer. So Kevin Harvick is the leader as we take this restart from our DLP ultimate picture cam. Yeah, I still like to see a better way of a uh, uh, controlling pit road speed. I mean, they got timing devices and we got attack. We, we got, got a battle, battle for, for the lead. lead. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car hunting the front up there with Kevin Harvick in the 29. Harvick holds on. He's got Johnson by a car length. And unlike the beginning of the race, I think now that second groove that you see Harvick running there down in one and two, it's starting to get a little more grip. You know why, Larry? The sun's gone down. I mean, it's pretty much shaded now, probably picking up some grip down there like we saw in qualifying. Since they restart double five, the cars on the lead lap have to pick their way through some traffic. How big a task does Denny Hamlin have ahead of him? He restarted 31st. This is when uh, when there's somebody said something about patience. You're going to have to really, really have a lot of patience. He's got a fast car. It's going to take him a long time to get all that back. Let's go to our melts on the wall, not in your hand replay. Watch David Gilliland, the 38. Mark Martin on the outside just tips him. Boy, slapped the wall, too. Looks like he'll be OK. Let's get the reaction from Denny Hamlin's pit, Steve. Well, Mike, his reaction was he was incredulous. He thought the team was kidding. He said, guys, he said, I never changed my speed once I slowed down. But Mike Ford did exactly what Darrell was talking about. He said, take it easy. We still have a great race car and we have a long way to go. We can get this back. And Steve, we looked at the replay during the break. He was pulling away from Kevin Harvick as they came down pit road. There was definitely a difference in speed between those two cars. Here's what concerns me, though. We've already been talking before the third way of this race, the 11 car having brake problems, brake issues. Now he's really going to have to use some brakes. But what he has to remember is, dude, you can lose it in the pits, but we can get it back in the pits, too. A little pit strategy, maybe two tires. I don't know what they'll do, but give them a chance to help you get it back. Hamlin restarted 31st. He's gained four positions. Let us show you what we saw as Denny Hamlin comes on to pit road. Watch he and Kevin Harvick right behind their nose to tail there at the first timing line. And watch what happens here. Looks like he gooses it just a little bit and gets a little gap between he and, uh, and the 29 car. And as we've said, there's a five mile an hour kind of free zone. But after that, if you're a hundredth of a second too fast through a section, other than what they give you, boom, you got a ticket. Yeah, and, and pit road speed is 45 miles per hour. That means they give them up to 50. We see Kurt Busch again on fresh tires going by Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. That was a battle for sixth place. But you can see how much brake they use getting into these corners at the end of these long straightaways, and you don't have a real low gear to help you on deacceleration. How you can help your brakes is you got it. You get the car woed up and then get off of them. Don't ride the brakes all the way to the middle of the corner. That's where you create all that heat. Use what you need and then get, get off, off of them. Yep.
You know, all these guys break with their left foot. I mean, you two foot drive a race car. You got your gas pedal on the right and you brake on the left. One of the things I learned through the years, if you're having a brake problem, is just use your right foot. Put your left foot on the footrest and use your right foot. That way, I'm off the gas and I'm on the brake. I'm off the brake and on the gas. Now watch Dale Jr. as we ride along with the Budweiser number eight. He is trying different lines on the track, trying to run down Kurt Busch. That's, a, that's why this is a fun racetrack, Mike. You can do that. You might find a lot of grip up high. You see that car right there that Kurt Busch is going underneath that Scott Riggs and the 10 car. All cars are back out on the racetrack, including David Reagan, David Streamy, and Scott Riggs. And the lap times between Bush and Earnhardt are not different by even a hundredth of a second. So different lines, but the same result right now. And Daryl, this could be where we start seeing some comers and goers. I think now the track is getting rubbered back in. You and Jeff talked about that in the pre-race, the hard rain we had last night. Plus, it's really starting to cool down and gaining a lot of grip. Yeah, and we've had a couple of three shots at making it better, too. You know, we've had a chance to work on our car a little bit, air, wedge, whatever. And that usually makes a big difference, too. Dave Blaney. As is often the case is our Toyota top performer in the Caterpillar Camry. Qualified 11th, currently 22nd. And then, I, I don't know if it's a, in my mind, it's a correlation. His crew chief, Blaney's crew chief, Kevin uh, Hamlin, came from Richard Childress Racing. Richard Childers Racing is running awfully well, and I think that some of the information that maybe he has notebook from the past is really paying dividends for Dave Blaney. And look who's right with Blaney, Denny Hamlin, who restarted 31st, now racing for 22nd. He's coming. Oh, yeah. He's got the car to do it with. And, you know, the good news for him also is that this er this early in the race, guys are going to be a little more forgiving. They're going to give they're going to cut you some slack. They know he's fast. They'll give him some breaks right now. And Daryl, they're going to have to do it, I think, a on the racetrack with performance and with the quickness of a pit stop. Just going back to the Bush Series race last night, what I observed, because you lose so much grip here, we know these cars don't have a lot of grip anyhow, two tires just not did not seem to be very good, just changing the rights only. Yeah, that'd be kind of a desperation thing, maybe right at the end of the night. Desperate people do desperate things. <laughs> That's what I've been told. <laughs> 123 laps complete out of 312 here in Phoenix. Kevin Harvick, the Shell Pennzoil Chevy, has led 24 laps. He's out in front right now by 1.7 seconds. And Kevin Harvick today will give us our DLP amazing moment. Kevin swept the two Phoenix races here last season, the first in April, beating Tony Stewart, and the second in November, Besting Jimmy Johnson. I'll tell you one thing is we had a shot of Kevin in his car there, Mike. Uh, he sure looked comfortable. Settling in for the long run. And look, I mean, he's not really cranking the wheel. Uh, so I think if we look at other cars, they talk about a car pushing. This car is not pushing. It's fairly neutral. See how he just got his hand up to the top. It's not going on over center there. So that car is really, really free and really turning well. He doesn't have his hands full at all right now. No, he's a, he really looks very comfortable. The car's working. It's not having a fight with it. Kind of looks like he did here last year a couple of times. Which really surprised me because I thought the car of tomorrow, I thought it would maybe mess up their setup, but it looks to me like it's working as good as it ever is. As we say, the cream still rises to the top. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin, who started 31st, has moved up into the top 20. There he is right behind Tony Raines. Hamlin is 19th, but he made a pass while we were in break. That'll take your breath away. Our Allstate Good Hands driver, let's make it the 26th of Jamie McMurray because here comes Hamlin filling up his mirror. He wants to get past the 41 of Reed Sorensen, the target car, gets position, and McMurray goes up and out of the way, and you're faster than me. There you go. So, Allstate will donate $1,000 to the Urban Youth Racing School, Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. There's our Fox 3D look at it. Just enough room to thread the needle. Definitely some giving and taking there, definitely. 
good spotter, uh, good good job on the spotter's part because those spotters have got to tell him where he is and what he's doing. You ever try to thread between two 3,200 pound needles? <laughs> I know you have. <laughs> yeah, made it a couple of times. <laughs> So Hamlin is now 18th and closing on Johnny Sauter, but it's a long way back to the front. Darrell talks about this a lot. Leader at the line now. now. That's the information they've got to give Denny Hamlin because right now, when the leader, Kevin Harvick, was at the start-finish line, which is our reference point, Denny Hamlin was just coming off turn two. So right now, he's well over a half lap behind our leader, Kevin Harvick. Here's Hamlin coming to the line now, and that's 18 seconds, 18 and a half. And our leader, Kevin Harvick, was in the middle of turn three and four. There's your leader, Jeff Hammond. Things I found interesting in the final practice yesterday is that Kevin Harvick wasn't very good in the first practice, but they actually got the car dialed into the point that he parked his car early. He felt that confident of his race car and the way it was going to perform tonight. And I really believe that he had that much confidence. I mean, that, that's just overwhelming to me. Darryl, you, you and Larry both have been in that situation. When the car is that good, you don't want to trick yourself out. No, and, and you can tell. You know, I mean, he won both races here last year. You know if this car is going to perform, and there's some more trash stuck on the uh, outside right corner of the 17 car as well. Looks like another windshield tear off. In a it is temperature, it is not on the grill part. It is not on the grill part. It's just stuffed up on the right side. Well, the thing about it, Dick Bergman, it may not be in front of where the air goes in to cool the radiator, but it looks like it's right over that right brake duct that cools that right front brake caliper. Crew area, we are okay here. It could also be responsible for the fact that when this run started, Kenseth got on the radio and told the crew that the car turned great. It was just terrific. A few laps ago, he got on the radio and told them that the car was real loose. Coming off the corner, he was having trouble hanging on. He had closed on Earnhardt, who is right in front of him. Earnhardt had been having chassis problems, car loose in and out, tight in the middle. Looked like Kenseth was going to pass him, and then he started going further and further back. Well, and to pick up on what Larry said, when you've got this down, here's where your brake duct is. When you have that open, then you're taking air in there. When you close that up, now you're creating some extra downforce, and that's why the car was turning so good. Pin in that Pan right front corner. Planting that right note corner down. We're 133 laps into this race. 312 is the total. And there, back in 18th position, Johnny Sauter giving up a spot to Tony Raines. Kevin Harvick is your race leader. Harvick has led the last 34 laps of this race. Pole sitter Jeff Gordon led 28 circuits, and Denny Hamlin has led 70 laps. Hamlin, though, when he made his pit stop under caution, was judged too fast coming into his pit by NASCAR's electronic scoring, had to restart at the tail end of the line 31st. And his number 11 now battles Mark Martin for 16th position. And, and, and he's made some, I saw that aggressive pass he made there a minute ago, but he also is being very smart about it. He's not putting himself in any harm's way right now. He's just driving up through there, catching them and passing them when, he, when it's safe. Now Mark Martin in the Army car is having his first start in the car of tomorrow. He did not race at Martinsville, Virginia or Bristol, Tennessee. See, that, that's Mark being smart. Then he goes outside, got a little more speed than I do, caught me, let him go. Well, he knows we're not even halfway into this race, and if we start racing each other, that leader's going to get closer to us. Mark Martin's one of those guys, he likes a little cushion in the front and a little cushion in the back. Just saw Kyle Busch in that five car really smoking that left front. I think it's two things. It's brakes, but also the left front corner of these cars gets very light getting in the corner. But remember, Kyle won the very first car tomorrow race in Bristol. Didn't have a very good qualifying run, head. Matt. But he's worked his way up into the top ten, Matt. Larry Mack, he does have a victory here a year and a half ago, struggled here last year, and he struggled during practice. In fact, at one point, he looked at me and said, we're making so many changes on this car, it's almost like turning it upside down and shaking it. Right now, he's fighting the same thing he's been fighting all week, and the car just has no turnability. Still tight. Every stop, they've made significant adjustments. Nothing has seemed to help. Did you hear what he said? We might need to get an older man to drive this car. I'll drive. <laughs> hey, pick me. I'll drive it. 
But, Daryl, if I'm Alan Gustafson right now, his crew chief, I'm looking at the scoring monitor saying, hey, we're going to keep working on it, but you're the fastest car on the racetrack right now. Kevin Harvick, your leader at 138 laps. He's one second ahead of Jimmy Johnson. Uh, nice to have you with us from Phoenix and our Q Motor Oil race summary. Four leaders, four different lead changes. We are checking on debris right now. We've had three cautions and nobody's out of the race. Kevin Harvick has led more laps tonight than all previous races combined this season. Remember, he won the Daytona 500. Denny Hamlet led 70 laps after Jeff Gordon led early, but penalized. You see Harvick right on his tail here. Entering pit road too fast. So that pushed him all the way back to 30th on the restart. Harvick battling anybody and everybody to get into the lead. Remember, he swept the races here last year in Phoenix. Jimmy Johnson trying to battle Harvick, but Kevin out in front. Hamlin moving up through the field, working inside the top 20, splitting cars with splitters to get back near the front. Now there's a battle for the lead with Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick. Back to live action here. Let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Well, what I was seeing in that battle was with Juan Montoya. That 42 car was doing everything he could possibly do, trying to pin the leader behind lap cars and everything else, trying to keep him going a lap down himself. And now he'll fight to stay the first car a lap down, where if we get that caution, he'll be get the free pass and be back on the lead lap. And over on the right, the DEI teammates, Truex in the one and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight. Battling, that's back at sixth place. Kurt Busch has moved up to fifth. While we were away, Kenny Wallace had the window net come loose on the driver's side of his car. That's a mandatory safety feature. He had to stop to repair it and dropped a lap. And that's a 78 car right there behind Kevin Harvick. And I think when they came in to put the window net up, they also put fresh tires on that car. That just shows you what fresh tires will do for you. And there is caution on the speedway. Have to check and see whether Sterling Marlin or Juan Pablo Montoya will be the car that would get the free pass. It depends on whether or not Harvick, there's the debris between three and four. Now that's just rubber. That's, no, that's all that is. That's just a, a wad of, it's a wad of rubber. These cars, uh, they pick it up mm -hmm. and it'll fall out from the car. And the call from NASCAR is metal debris up in three and four. Maybe a little further up there. Yep. There are some. That's tape. Montoya will get the free pass. He was the first car one lap down. At the scoring loop, the cars passed immediately prior to the caution flag coming out. So caution is out for the fourth time, and pit road is open. Everybody on the lead lap can pit this time. Krista. Tony Stewart heated on the radio because he wants to race. He's tired of cautions. He said his car is just a little bit free. Steve Burns. Jeff Burton says the biggest place I'm getting loose is getting into turn one. My rear grip is better, but I'm struggling in the center. Dick Jr. consistently running in the top 10 says the car is 60% loose, 40% tight, and he has let the crew decide what to fix it. Matt. Kevin Harvick says the car still too free on exit. Great stop by the Shell Penzoil guys. They made an air pressure adjustment of both rear tires in the previous stop. Made another air pressure adjustment this time as well. Hey, the guys that rose to the occasion that time, Greg Zepidelli in that 20 car with Tony Stewart. I know they only gained one position, but they had an awesome stop. 31 had some sort of issue. <laughs> There's another guy at a great pit stop. Matt Kenseth at that 17. Denny Hamlin gained two spots on pit road. He's now 13th. Jeff Burton lost three spots on pit road. They just had a bad spot. The crew said, uh, stop, the crew said. It's Kevin Hamlin, or rather Kevin Harvick, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, and Jimmy Johnson on the restart. But what makes it tough for Denny Hamlin? Yeah, he's 13th, but with that long inside line of lap down cars, it's like restarting in 26th back there. New leader, Tony Stewart. Puts Big Orange out front for the first time tonight. I believe they just keep making that 20 car better and better with every stop. Yeah, I do too. And you heard him say, you know, I want to do some racing here. Let's quit having all these cautions. So that means he must have a pretty good race car. 
a win would be a nice birthday present for his crew chief, Greg Zippadelli. This is a big O birthday for Zippy. 4-0. Krista? Well, Tony and his team know they actually do not have the best handling car, but like you said, they're sticking to their plan of making their adjustments. Something else they have in their back corner, the fact that Tony knows every inch of this track. He is racing. as well as his Bush and Nextel Cup cars. He is very comfortable at PIR. Yeah, Krista, one of those wins came in his rookie season here back in 1999 in the Nextel Cup car. And, and I really don't think you know how good your car is until you get it out front like this. And it's going to be a whole different car, I believe, if you get out front and get all that clean air on it. Kenny Wallace a lap down in the 78. Trying to hold off Martin Truex. In the one, Kurt Busch in the two. See Jamie McMurray right there in the 26 car started to race on the outside of the front row. Right now he's one lap down because of having to come to pit road under green, overheating, and Denny Hamlin just continues to march back to the front as he battles Carl Edwards for 12th, and I mean literally battling. Hamlin, teammate of the race leader, Tony Stewart, who was leading this race when a penalty put him to the back. Well, you know, between he and, uh, and uh, Tony Stewart, the two Gibbs drivers, they dominated the first two low car tomorrow races by leading all kinds of Tony. I don't know what he lead, 250 laps at Bristol, and uh, they led the most laps, about 50% of the laps that's been run in the COG. And J.J. Yaley, who's from Phoenix, still in the top 20. It'd be nice to see J.J. have a, a really good run here. It's his home track. It's his hometown. Uh, it'd be really nice to see him get a good finish tonight. He seemed really pumped for the race. Especially having that terrible luck at Texas last week. Got caught up in that lap one crash. Down the day. In the 18, just ahead of Dale Jarrett. And we're hearing there may be something amiss with Dale Jr. as you watch uh, Ryan Newman move to the inside. The number eight, let's listen in. Unless the fuel's filling out in the truck or getting in the back of the car because my eyes burn like hell after y'all fill it up and I can smell it. All right, good pull. Dick Bergman. Well, it's just when they fill the car that he has the problems with the fumes bothering him, Mike. The crew really isn't sure what's causing that. Reminder, this is the car tomorrow. A lot of new stuff here. And uh, somehow or another, fumes from gasoline as they're pouring the fuel in the car is bothering his eyes. A reminder, at Martinsville, remember he had dirt in his eye and yet managed to uh, lead 137 laps there and finish fifth. And the only thing I can figure out, pretty much the fuel cell, the way you fuel it, everything in the trunk area is the same car tomorrow, the current car. I'm not sure that would have anything to do with it, but Daryl, there's a hose there, and maybe it's leaking when it's filling up with fuel. I, I think one of the things, we talked about the unleaded fuel a number of times and how it affects the engine, but I also believe there's an effect there that goes on with all these uh, fuel or raw fuel we see burning out the tailpipes. I think there's more fumes there than maybe we're used to because of the unleaded fuel. And who knows, maybe the foam is smoldering again. You know, another car I've been watching since the start of the race, Bobby Labonte in that 43 car, he started back in the 26th position. He's been hanging just inside, outside the top 15 right now, right behind Carl Edwards sitting back there in 16th position. Good solid run so far as we're just past halfway. Looks like he's going to get to the inside of Carl Edwards. But you can see how those rotors are glowing as we got a battle chalking up here for second place with Harvick and Gordon. You know, I noticed that Jeff Gordon on this last go-round before this uh, caution here, man, they're rubbing each other pretty good right there. I noticed that Jeff Gordon's car had gotten considerably better. He was actually chasing down, uh, I forget who was leading at the time, it was Harvick. He was actually chasing him down, and you see here he's going by. Jeff Gordon's 24 started on the pole. Here comes his teammate to the inside, Jimmy Johnson. Bold move there, diving under Kevin Harvick. Yeah, kind of uh, Kevin lost his momentum as Jeff went by on the outside. It gave Jimmy a chance to shoot to the inside and make uh, what he hopes to be a pass here. Fighting for third. Got to be really careful driving off into these corners side by side like that. A little slip up on the, on the inside and 
Somebody's going to go for a slide. And we see that a lot in these long sweeping corners. Now just ahead of these two, we're told that Jeff Gordon has a left front tire rubbing on his DuPont Chevy. Well, that's uh, probably when he and the 29 made a little contact. Now the problem with these two guys running side by side is they're losing almost four tenths of a second to our leader Tony Stewart right now. They're running 29 flat. He's sitting up there running 28 50s and 60s. Right, and Larry. Matt Kenseth is catching them in that 17. Kenseth is catching them and Jeff Gordon's driving away from them. I think they just got the message. Yep. This battle has to Stop. resolve itself. Stop <laughs> playing games and <laughs> get in line. Because you can choke each other down here uh, the way they were running there. You just lose all your momentum. And here comes Kenseth in the 17. What you want is a car to work nicely on the outside like Kenseth is in one and two, and then be able to run the bottom in three and four. That's the best way around this racetrack. See if we can spot where Jeff Gordon got that damage on the left front. Boy, those rotors on the 29 are red hot. Let's see what we got here, guys. Yeah, that's what I thought. He and Harvick, they get really close together. Yeah, that's not much. It's not much, but it doesn't take much. Got to remember that's in slow mo. Didn't even scuff the paint off of Harvick's car. And Steve, Latar <laughs> Steve Latar talking to Todd Barrier right there. Todd Barrier, Kevin Harvick's crew team, it's like, God, what are we doing here? Neighbors. Phoenix is a one mile track, so NASCAR classifies it as a super speedway. But it races much like a short track, and that puts a premium on brakes. Jeff Hammond. Mike, all night long we've been talking about how these rotors on these cars have been glowing. These big brakes, just like we race at Martinsville and Richmond, right now are being put to the test. But my biggest concern, if you'll look, this is the front brake duct of the new COT car. This is the brake duct that we ran last year. We're running currently in the car today. This brake duct will basically go inside the front of this one. I'm wondering if we're getting enough air to the brakes to keep them cool. A lot of these rotors are glowing red. Guys are using them very heavily. We've also seen the issue tonight of guys getting a windshield tear off stuck to the front of the car, not only getting on the front of the grill, but also getting on in front of these brake ducts. Hopefully this won't happen anymore because it's sticky back. Even though you get behind another car, it won't release. It's just stuck there until you get a chance to come in pit road and pull it away from these openings. We've already seen the 26 car run hot. We've seen the 17 car have handling problems and potential brake problems because of these tear-offs. Guys? Thanks, Jeff. 172 laps complete. Tony Stewart, your leader. Jeff Gordon, seven-tenths of a second back, is a little quicker than Stewart right now, and Jimmy Johnson in third is a little faster than both of them. 179 laps complete. Ward Burton from South Boston, Virginia, driving for Tim Morgan and Larry McClure with Virginia Tech on the hood of his number four. His Ward Burton Wildlife Foundation has had a longstanding partnership with Virginia Tech. They've been offering support to the folks up in Blacksburg, and Ward will be up at Virginia Tech on Monday. Several drivers going up there just to show their sympathy and support for all the folks affected by the tragedy there. You would be amazed at how deeply this has affected very closely folks in the NASCAR community and in the garage area who are either graduates of or have close ties to Virginia Tech. Yeah, well, you know, we're such a tight family. And uh, when we have tragedy amongst us, uh, I think that's when we're at our best. And we all got great friends and family that uh, are at Virginia Tech. So we really can identify and be a part of what's going on there. You won't find a closer knit group of people than the NASCAR family, where it, whether it's tragedy within our sport or within any other sport out there. Eighth place, Ryan Newman in the all tell Dodge, trying to get past Martin Truex Jr. Six and a half seconds behind the leader and just running just identical lap times. 
It's you amazing know, actually how many cars are running so close to the same times. Our leaders are all 29 O's all the way down to uh, Harvick. He's a 29 one. Then we go 29 ones for quite a ways. But Steve Burns, Daryl and I were talking to each other during the break as a whole with 129 laps to go. This seems to be the best both Penske cars have run as a team all year long, Steve. Larry Mack, Ryan Newman has just one top 10 finish this year. And Larry, you were talking about the temperatures going down. Ryan Newman actually apologized to his team prior to the last pit stop. He said, I should have let you do more adjustments. The cool temperatures are upsetting the balance of the car, but they have gotten significantly better. He said that he's not as tight as he was earlier in the race. I, I tell you, I'm worried about, I'm worried about that 29 car. A, a little earlier, I saw all four brake rotors glowing red on that car, and he's been falling back a little bit here over the last little bit. I'm not so sure he's not having an issue. And we normally don't see the rear brake rotors glowing because you have much more front brake in these cars, even with the adjustment. Seems to be having, there's something going on with that car because it was just dominant earlier. What could it be, Matt? Basically, Mike, it's just the handling of the race car. He said either the tires aren't mashed up right or it's just they might have gone a little too far in their adjustments on the last stop. He says the car just has no grip whatsoever. He's just hanging on right now. Well, well Matt, he's going to have to hang on for about 35 or 40 more laps because that's how long it is to our next pit stop should we stay green. And that's why the, I think the rotors were glowing. When the car doesn't handle, you just got to use a lot more brake. Kurt Busch in sixth place. His teammate Ryan Newman seventh. They're the two leading Dodges in this race. Well, that car right there last weekend could have won that race at Texas. Kurt Busch could have. He had a great car down there. Hit it and the caution came out. 187 laps complete. Tony Stewart's picked it up. He's once again just as quick as the rest of the front five. And Stewart is out front by half a second. Tony Stewart is in a hurry. Watch from Dale Jarrett as Stewart threads the needle between Jarrett and Ward Burton. Why? He's got Jeff Gordon right up his bumper. That's why. See Jeff back there. You can do that off that corner. We saw Denny Hamlin do it. As long as everybody cooperates, you can do that. And not far behind Jeff Gordon, you saw that 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, who has now taken second spot away from his teammate, Jeff Gordon. 48 car has just been lurking back there, I believe. I think that 48 car gets really, really happy on a long run. Juan Pablo Montoya trying to stay on the lead lap as Tony Stewart moves around the outside of the 42 and puts the seven time Formula One winner a lap down. You see Jimmy Johnson, the 48 car, still sparking. He's been sparking for 195 laps and we got 117 to go. Now, Denny Hamlin was leading the race when he pitted, got a speeding penalty, restarted 31st, did a good job of climbing up to the top dozen, but that's where he stuck in 12th place. Yeah, it gets a little, the close to the front you get, a little, it gets a little bit harder every time you catch somebody. And right now he's about a third of a lap behind our leader, Tony Stewart. His pit crew got him a couple of spots with the pit stop the last time they, he's only gained one spot since that restart. But you know, that's a lot of maturity, Larry. He didn't panic. He got himself back in the top, so he's 11th now. Uh, so 12. Another good pit stop, another round of adjustments. He'll be right back in it. And a good run for Jeff Green. One spot there behind Denny Hamlin. He's been a top 15 car all evening. He's got to be kind of liking this car tomorrow. I mean, he's had some good, two good runs in this car. 197 laps complete. Tony Stewart, your leader by eight tenths of a second over Jimmy Johnson. Earlier today, Jeff Hammond filed this State Farm safety report. We've seen where crashes at the front of the car can lead to the car kitchen on fire. And the reason for this is for the fact that the fuel pump, which is bolted to the front of the engine, gets broken off. The fuel inside the pump can create the fire, and the fuel siphoning down the fuel lines 
can also add to the blaze. Because of this, NASCAR decided to lead the development of a cable-driven pump by Waterman, which is located in the trunk of the car. Now, this pump can be mounted to the top of the check valve, which this one is here, or it can also be mounted to the back of the rear firewall in the trunk area. Now, the key reason to this is when the engine stops, the fuel flow stops. And any driver will tell you that in the event of an accident, if you can reduce the chance of fire, it's a better thing. Thanks, Jeff. One Ford in the top ten, Matt Kenseth. Two Dodges, teammates Ryan Newman and Kurt Busch. Rest of the top ten right now, all Chevrolets. The leading Toyota in the race is Dave Blaney in 24. There are 26 cars on the lead lap. Make that 25 as Sterling Marlin is about to fall victim to Tony Stewart, the race leader in the 20. But, Darrell, you pointed it out in your ride and drive. Tony Stewart is using that apron, especially from the center off, to get that 20 car to turn. Yeah, you get that left front tire down on that uh, apron, that tire's got positive camber in it. That inside edge will start to dig into that apron and make that car turn for you. Well, we heard the story earlier. Stewart has two USAC wins here and two Indy Racing League wins here in an Indy car. And he is an expert at finding a line on a short track or a flat track that nobody else runs on, making his car go. He's out in front by seven tenths of a second after 201 laps in Phoenix. It's Tony Stewart leading Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon with 104 laps to go. Matt Kenseth running fourth. That's our Ford bold move or moves. In fact, the only non-Chevy to win this year. And since Daytona, he's been 11th or better. Matt Kenseth in his Roush Fenway Ford. So far in this race, the pole sitter Jeff Gordon led the first 28 laps. He had some communication problems early. Tony Stewart had problems early, involved in a record that'll lap 155, taking the lead, the seventh lead change. And after that, Jeff Hammond, look at these battles with Kevin Harvick and Jeff Gordon, and then Kevin Harvick and Jimmy Johnson. We said this was a little big short track, and you see these guys are here racing door handle and door handle. This is one of the best things about this racetrack here in Phoenix. Six leaders, seven different lead changes. Jimmy Johnson and Harvick going at each other right now. Jimmy Johnson currently running second behind Tony Stewart. Jeff Gordon's third, Matt Kenseth's fourth, Ryan Newman running fifth, and Kevin Harvick running sixth. Tony Stewart, currently your leader, Saturday night. All right for racing, and don't forget Saturday. A good time to tune in for Fox Major League Baseball. A caution is out with 102 laps to go, our fifth caution of the race. See right now the leader right there taking it, so fifth caution. And this right here, curious in my opinion, is one of those times it's really going to weigh heavy on the pit crews as they get ready to come under and kick, be picked up by the pace car here and get ready to make their pit stops. Tony Stewart, uh, the uh, second Phoenix race led in the last nine events that he's run here. We'll see how the caution affects his lead. Let's rejoin Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. Thanks, Chris. Debris between turns one and two will put us under the caution flag. Ricky Rudd will get the free pass. He was running 24th, the first car one lap down. When the leaders pit, Ricky will be able to come around the track and get back up on the lead lap. Tony Stewart brings the field on pit road, and I should have said he had two IRL runner-up finishes here, not two IRL wins, but he's going to pit right in front of Krista. Tony Stewart says he needs to cut better through the corners. That's really the only thing the number 20 Home Depot Chevrolet is missing right now, cutting in the corners. He needs that pivot. Steve Burns. Krista Ryan Newman says his car feels pretty darn good. Let's just make half the adjustments we made last time. Chassis and air pressure. Dick. On the last pit stop, Matt Kenseth's crew picked up two spots. Then on the racetrack, he picked up one. Matt. Chassis adjustment already completed for Jimmy Johnson's Chevrolet. Needed to have a little more help in the center of the corner. And also on that battery issue, he keeps swapping back and forth between ignition boxes and the battery. That's the game plan to try to go to the finish. How about that battle off pit road? Those four guys right there, Kenta, Johnson, Gordon, and Stewart, almost went across the line simultaneously. I think we had some contact here between the 8 and the 12 as they exited their pit boxes. I don't know how much damage got done. Let's see if we can. Oh, that's pretty hard right there. Especially on that eight car right front fender. Maybe didn't hurt the 12. And we're also getting a report that Dale Earnhardt Jr. said his steering wheel is not in the same position, which tells me it affected those front wheels. 
Brian Newman trying to stay off of his Penske teammate Kurt Busch. Next Saturday and next Sunday we're at Talladega. Fastest speedway on earth. The race off pit road was too close to call. That's why we have and NASCAR has a super slow mo camera right there. It was that close so close that Steve Letarte the crew chief on Jeff Gordon's car closest to the camera went to the NASCAR officials to plead his case. He should be leading the race on the restart. NASCAR has it scored that Tony Stewart was the first car to the line at pit exit. He's turning into pop tart tonight because every time we see him he's popping up off that seat and. Before it was with Harvick and uh, his crew chief. Now he's over there with the NASCAR people. There's the camera NASCAR uses at that line and certainly while Steve Letard is pleading this case. He'd much rather be out front here because you know what this race is winding down. We only have 96 laps to go. Our final singular virtual crew chief question for the night. Will Jeff Gordon finally win at Phoenix. He's been trying since 1992. Yes or no text the word crew to 191 on your singular AT&T wireless phone or you can go to FoxSports.com to cast your vote. Well he, he would accomplish two things if he did he would win a race here and he would have won it from the pole which no one's ever done. And he would break a tie with Dale Earnhardt on the all time win list. And he would get 10 bonus points to add to his points total when they reset the, the, the top 12 drivers headed into those final 10 chase races. 10 bonus points for each win. Looking at Ward Burton and the big VT on the hood. Our thoughts and prayers with everyone affected by the tragedy at Virginia Tech. We'll stand silent on this restart and for all of them and all of you will crank it up. teammate right along with him too. Those two cars are really really running well tonight the 12 and the 2. Tell you one thing Juan Pablo he never gives up. It doesn't matter if he's racing for first or last. He had a moment on that restart going off into turn one. Well put I might add. <laughs> he had a moment but the guy that we was, went down in there with had a bigger moment. There you see him, the 42 car on the inside. He starts, to, he thinks about going down underneath the 15 car, and there really wasn't quite enough room, Juan. <laughs> wasn't quite enough racetrack at all. There's a look at it from Harvick's point of view. Watch it front of you there. Say it again. Say it again. All quite, a, quite a bit of damage on his right front fender, too. But everybody got straightened up and all right. Tony Stewart the leader his Joe Gibbs racing teammate Denny Hamlin there he is in the number 11 trying to fight his way back into the top 10 for the first time since he pitted out of the lead back about lap 140. Well Denny Hamlin he knows the clock is ticking now as we're under 100 laps to go and we watched that last run he got the 12th and he just couldn't go any further as you still see smoke from that 42 car Montoya. Yeah he's got quite a bit of damage on that right front fender I think it's rubbing on a tire now it's particularly under braking. 
Yeah, it was lap 100, not 140, when Hamlin pitted. Whew. A lot of brake rotor uh, blow in there on that 42 car. Watch Dale Jr. and Montoya here. Coming off a of turn two, you just sometimes get pushing up, and you just can't get the car to stop. And remember, Dale Earnhardt Jr. just on that last pit, last pit stop, he got the right front fender damage with Ryan Newman. Now, Dick Bergman was telling us at break that they elected not to give up track position because right now we've got 24 cars in the lead lap. They felt like since the tire wasn't rubbing that it wouldn't be worth coming to pit road and looking at or trying to fix. Well, Larry, walking around the garage area in a couple of hours before the race started was a pretty calm scene and the people who seemed to be doing the most scurrying from one garage stall to the other were the representatives of the brake manufacturers. They had a busy day. They have been all three days here because as we spoke earlier, even though we've been at two short tracks, the speed you enter the corner here and the high gear that you have versus what we ran at Bristol or Martinsville, they knew it was going to be a concern at the end of these long straightaways, in a, even in a 312 lap race. And you get down near the end of this race and you've used a lot of brake and the pad are worn. You really are uh, got your uh, feet full trying to get your car woed up. Might need some of those Jeff Burton shoes. Kenny Strader driving for the Wood Brothers. Motorcraft Ford just ahead of Scott Riggs. And Kyle Busch, who last week, due to a simple miscommunication, between he and his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, Bush crashed the number five at Texas, told the crew on the radio the car was undrivable, couldn't be repaired. They were working on the car. He left the racetrack thinking it could not be repaired. They thought he was waiting in the hauler for it to be fixed. So a simple miscommunication when the car was repaired. Kyle was not there to drive it. And Rick Pigeon on that team, good friend of Dale Earnhardt Jr., went to his buddy, says, can you hop in and relieve us? Jr. said, let me check. He did, got into the number five, and finished the race, gaining them some points. You don't see this in any other sport, someone helping a rival team. But, Daryl, it goes back to your term, coopetition. Yeah, in that case it was. And uh, he might want to listen to Jimmy V's speech sometime about don't ever give up. Because once uh, you never you never leave until the car is in the trailer. You know, I've been watching this 07 car of Clint Boyer. He was battling with his teammate Jeff Burton a while ago, but he's been starting to go backwards. It's almost like the children's cars are starting to fade just a little bit in the latter stages of this race. We watched Kevin Harvick a while ago, not as good as he was, and now Clint Boyer continues to lose spots. Mark Martin moves through. And there's a look at Boyer from the UPS Toyota of Dale Jarrett. Tony Stewart's lead over Jeff Gordon, six tenths of a second. 76 laps to go in the subway, fresh fit 500 on Fox. Tony Stewart, two-time Nextel Cup champion, out in front of Jeff Gordon by six tenths of a second. Look a little further back. where Denny Hamlin has just passed Kyle Busch. So Hamlin's march from 31st at lap 100. He's back Took to him 10. 137 laps to get back up into the top 10, but he is there. Now Jeff Green having a strong night. He's the 12th place car, driving for Haas Automation Racing in the 66. We'll take you through the rest of the cars on the lead lap. Carl Edwards in the Roush Fenway 99 Ford, 13, 14 seconds off the lead. And here's a guy that we haven't talked a whole lot about tonight, but by golly, running a great race. Bobby Labonte in the old 43 car. Not a mark on that car. Steady Eddie. J.J. Yaley, whose dad, Cactus Jack, a well-known sprint car racer, both in the Phoenix area and on the World of Outlaws circuit. J.J. did a lot of open wheeling before he moved up to Cup. He is 15. Next guy, Chris Devota, talked about him earlier. Johnny Sauter in his 70. Remember, comes in here 35th in owner points. A good finish could give him a little bit of a cushion headed to Talladega. Last week's winner, Jeff Burton in the singular 31. Had that bad pit stop. And he never has overcome it, Mike. He nope. got back there about 13th, 14th, and been stuck right there. Burton is 17th. 
Mark Martin running a partial schedule, his sixth race of the year in the Army car. And Mark right now is 18 seconds back of the leader in 18th. Well, Mark might have a little bit better run tonight than he's having, but this is his first race in the car tomorrow. Here's another car having a great run up there in the top 20. Tony Raines in his 96 car had a great run last week at Texas, finished 13th, right there in the top 20 again tonight. Yeah, they got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. They've really made a lot of progress over the last few weeks. Clint Boyer in the Direct TV 07, and then Joe Nemechek, 20th and 21st. You know, Boyer coming off that win last night, exciting win here in the Bush race. I thought he had run a lot better tonight. I thought, matter of fact, I thought all the children's cars would be a little bit better, but they're fading here late. Nemechek is 21 seconds off the lead with that number 13. You know, another surprise has been this 16 car, Greg Biffle. He's still hanging in there on the lead lap, but Mike, we've been watching his pit stops. Wholesale changes every time he comes to pit road by Pat Trison and that crew. Just can't get that car quite right for Biffle. The first of the Robert Yates Fords is Ricky Rudd, and he's the veteran from Chesapeake, Virginia, is in the 23rd position. Got the lucky dog there uh, earlier on, didn't he? I think he, he did. He, get did. It. Yeah, he, he was one of the cars. He got a lap down and then it got it back. So he's holding his own now. Right now, Robert Yates racing. They're looking for next weekend at Talladega. Okay. And you're riding with Reed Sorensen trying to take away Rudd's 23rd position. The target dodge of Sorensen is the last car on the lead lap. And there's the leader, top of your screen, big orange, Tony Stewart, who has now been out in front for 88 laps, the most of any driver tonight. 68 laps to go in Phoenix. 62 laps to go here in Phoenix. Tony Stewart, who has led the most laps, 90 plus, leading uh, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth fourth, and Jeff Gordon stalking, hoping for his first ever win here in Phoenix and hoping for his 76th career win, which would tie him sixth all time with Dale Earnhardt. He started the race, Gordon, as the pole sitter, but communication problems with his helmet. He ironed that out, led the first 28 laps. Later, battling for the fourth spot with Kevin Harvick, third and fourth, trading paint, going at each other, wearing each other out. His crew chief, Steve Letard, looking in at Harvick's crew chief, said, hey, we got to save some of this after a caution on the restart. By a splitter second, Harvick edges Gordon and Letarte trying to double check with the official there to catch the break. But with seven leaders and nine lead changes, Jeff Gordon still trying to pull out his first victory of this year, coming in as the points leader. That was our virtual crew chief question. Singular as we asked you, will Jeff Gordon win his first Phoenix race? And most of you, it's close, say yes. His 17th, the Phoenix Nextel Cup race, best finish third three times for Jeff Gordon. But Jeff Hammond with just under 60 laps to go. Pit stops, how soon will they come and what kind of advantage will they play for Jeff Gordon? Well, right now you can see pretty easily that uh, our public right now is kind of torn whether Jeff's going to be able to pull this thing off or not. But about lap 285, 290, we can expect these teams to start making green flag stops. And I really believe that's what's going to make the difference. We've seen early on the night. Denny Hamlin got in trouble speeding in. You're going to have to be very much on, up on your game when you get down pit road. And these crews can't make any mistakes. We've seen several mistakes made on pit road this week. week. So that's going to be the other thing I think it's going to kind of play out. The crews have got to be perfect, Chris. I believe it's going to come down between Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon. But don't rule out Jimmy Johnson. Just, you know, 58 laps to go. Yeah, we already had a Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson finish earlier this year. Johnson with three wins of the seven previous races. So it should be an exciting finish. Let's rejoin. Darrell Walter, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. And we've had a few uh, audio difficulties equipment-wise. We apologize for that as Tony Stewart leads this race with 57 to go. Darrell, he's not pulling away from Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon's not gaining on him, but the battle is joined right here for third place. Yeah, and I wouldn't count that yellow 17 car out just yet because this is a kind of race that Matt's really good at kind of laying back there and letting everybody back up to him. We're going to make a pit stop and throw a spring rubber at the audio equipment, trying to get that fixed up for you. Stewart, your leader with 57 to go. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Not sure what's going on with Kins as I heard him. I think we had some radio conversation there a little bit ago about the car getting on the splitter 
Uh, that could be what that was. Got down in the corner, heavy braking, and that was coming from the uh, nose dragging the ground. But I definitely agree with what Jeff Hammond was talking about. We're getting within about 15 to 20 laps. What could possibly be the last pit stop of the night. It'll come somewhere over with 20 to 30 laps to go. You can't have any mistakes and you've got to make the right adjustment because this probably will be the last shot you get. But we've been watching this Penske group here. Kurt Busch that two, Ryan Newman in the 12. They've been hooked together almost all night long right there just inside outside the top five. I have seen vast improvements in these two cars the last two or three weeks. Again, Kurt Busch had a really good shot at winning last week. They're running well tonight, fifth and sixth. Great improvement in these two cars. And, uh, thanks for your patience with our audio difficulties. We believe we have that straightened out now. And Mike, I know it maybe didn't show up at Bristol talking about those two Penske cars, but if there's an organization that tested the car tomorrow more than anyone else out there, it was the Penske group. Kevin Harvick led a lot of this race, 54 laps in fact, for Richard Childress. He's now dropped into the seventh position, eight seconds off the lead. This battle is for eight. Denny Hamlin trying to get back to the lead where he last was at lap 100. 167 laps later, Hamlin has just moved into eight. And that just tells you when you have a bet, when something goes so wrong. Can talk to him about the car when you get a chance. When something goes wrong, you get back in the field like that, how long it takes to overcome it. And Mike, there's no question, Denny Hamlin's lap times, they're better when he's out in clean air like this, better than anybody on the racetrack. But the problem is, is nine seconds up there to Tony Stewart with seven other cars in between him and Tony Stewart. Denny Hamlin's one car that definitely needs a caution or two to try to get caught back up. Steve Burns has more. Yeah, Mike, expect Denny Hamlin to hit pit road on lap 286. Those orders coming from crew chief Mike Ford. Denny saying the car is good, just a little bit tight. And you know he's got to be just absolutely beside himself to have a car that great make a mistake on pit road that's going to cost him a shot at winning this race. But you know, Mike, Darrell, we sat down with Denny Hamlin this morning. Tonight is his 51st career Nextel Cup start. He has only had one DNF, but he told us this morning, he said, I pride myself in finishing races because when I ran my late model, I had to fix it and I had to pay for it. If I wrecked, I knew I may not race the next week. Larry, Daryl, yeah, one buddy. of my questions right now has got to be, if you're up there like, say, Jimmy Johnson, Kirk Bush, Ryan Newman, you know you've got to make up some ground. Do you stop maybe a little bit early? Try to get the benefit of these fresh tires so you can gain some ground on the leader. We know that new tires are worth a ton right about this point in the race. I know one cat that's not going to stop early if he can help it, and we're looking at him because that's what happened to him <laughs> last week. No, I... Uh, I tell you, I'd go to the very end, and then I'm going to be sure I'm one of the last ones on pit road in case that dreaded debris caution flew on me. And it's a 50-50 gamble. Yeah, you'd love to have advantage of those tires, but we know we're getting to the point of a run where these cars are starting to slide around, and you may get that caution. Roger Penske's Dodges trade places. Ryan Newman to fifth, Kurt Busch to sixth. No rivalry there. A lot of great rivalries next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern Time. Cubs cards, Yankees socks. You're looking at Kurt Busch in the number two, who is an avid, lifelong Cubs fan. He is that. You and him, right? Yeah. <laughs> and lots of others. Green flag pit stops for the leaders, Dick Bergeron. And Junior has decided to short pit, pit before everybody else. Here's the strategy. Whoa! They just got that left rear tire on. Krista. Martin Truex coming in. The rules on the radio do not speed. That is what Bono Manning told Martin Truex. They made a slight air pressure adjustment. They're also making a track bar wedge adjustment for this last run. Tony Stewart left in your 
screen the race leader by 1.4 seconds for the last two laps his crew has been up on the wall standing on the wall tires at the ready but they have not yet brought the leader in and there's no reason for Tony Stewart to come in what they need to do is keep an eye on Jeff Gordon maybe Matt Kenseth maybe Jimmy Johnson there's no reason for him to short pit with those guys right behind him staying out there because then just like last week at Texas Kurt Busch you run the risk of being burnt by a caution flag. I tell you who this race is really backing right up into his hands I believe is the 17 car. He's going to have a blazing fast pit stop and he's right there behind these guys. Watch the 17 car. Matt Kenseth. Right now the fastest cars on the track lap after lap are Kenseth and Denny Hamlin in seventh place. If they make a minor tweak on this 17 car help him out just a little bit look out. There's Kenseth and on the right his crew chief Robbie Reiser both Not really good here 30 laps to go here. Both from Wisconsin they used to race against each other. Now they're on the same team. Here comes uh, Kurt Busch in that two car in as well as we see Clint Boyer the 07. He's on pit road. Jamie McMurray the outside pole sitters in as well. All of these are four tire stops under green and enough fuel to go the distance. Here's a 24 on pit road. The pole sitter Jeff Gordon will surrender second place to come to pit road. Now this is where Tony Stewart he's going to have to come pretty quick. We're seeing Ryan Newman the 12 Kevin Harvick the 29 trouble They're trouble four. got a crash. car around big crash Blaney Blaney Yaley and the number one of Martin Truex and this caution will burn several teams and pin them a lap down because they pitted under green. See Jeff Gordon they're going to go ahead and complete the, their stop the 12 car down here they had a miscommunication and uh, they were trying to decide whether they're going to go and change all four tires or not and he drove off with the wheel loose and now they have a violation for now they put the car back in the box now he's OK. Yeah he has left front went on down pit road yep, he without him. outside the box. First let's show you what happened to Ryan Newman in the 12. The jack man just he's, he's totally confused nobody I, they obviously didn't know it was a four tire change. Somebody didn't. And there goes that left front. Well I think they knew it was a four tire change Darrell, but I think they panicked when they saw that caution flag. Oh Looked you know like Blaney, Blaney was trying to get to on trying to get on pit road. And Carl got, Edwards got, got rear ended room. and here comes Yaley poor old Yaley. The luck continues for that 18 car. See Martin Truex Jr. the one car just had made that pit stop just barely got stopped. Yeah, his new tires are now junk. Ooh. Ooh, lick. Jeff Gordon had come to pit road his crew chief Steve Latart looking things over his reaction. Up there on the box with Ken Howes. So who gets caught a lap down will wait for the leaders to come around behind the caution car and the scoring to cycle. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kurt Busch Ryan Newman at the very least all appear to have gone a lap down under this caution because they pitted under green and then the caution flag wave and for Kurt Busch he's the unlucky guy two weeks in a row. I'm just not a fan of short pitting. I just this happens too many times to make me want to short pit. Let me tell you who I think might be in good shape. We need to score in a cycle through but it appears that the 24 car because of where he was running on the racetrack and where the caution came out that they got their four tires changed and he stayed on the lead lap. Now remember Tony Stewart Kenseth all those other cars Matt they have to make a pit stop so it's going to be interesting on this 24 car. Jeff Gordon just said Larry Mack is I kind of question does stopping for the four tires and he says when it all cycles out those Steve Latar told him we should be the leader. He goes, yep, that was a great call by you and our guys. As the leaders are now on pit road, we'll see how that cycle works out. Krista. Well, a little less pressure for Tony Stewart's front tire carrier. Last month, Scott Merritt was pitting Hooters Pro Cup teams. Now he's filling in for the Premier team in Nextel Cup. No adjustments. Dick Bergeron. Matt Kenseth did not pit road. They were worried about running out of fuel in this car, and his crew clicks off a good one. Steve. Denny Hamlin has exited his pitch. Dick, he said he had gotten tight on the long run. 
They raised the track bar half around, just one can of fuel, four tires. Matt? J Jimmy Johnson said, I need to be tightened up, and that's exactly what they did with the adjustments now. He can also turn on his brake blowers as we have a great run to the finish. Remember, he's been battling battery issues all night long. Every 25 laps or so, he swaps back and forth, batteries and ignition box. All right, scoring is updated. And indeed, Kurt Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Ryan Newman, and Martin Truex Jr. were lead lap cars when they pitted under green, and they are now a lap down. Let me show you what helped the 24 car there. Is we just His pit box right there was that very first pit box. Well, two things helped him. Running near the leader and having that very end pit box, so only he, he had to only move a few feet to stay on the lead lap. That's what qualified on the pole. There's his pit box right there he only had to move to right there and everything's the field's frozen right there so that's great call on that team and how did he get to use that pit box he won the pole so his team had the first pick of pit position Joe Nemechek will get the free pass and things have really turned around in the desert with 25 laps to go 22 laps to go. Here is the crash at turn four. Synced up time code, real time, both views. Since Jeff Gordon's already on pit road when the caution comes out, pit road closes. But since he's already on pit road, he can make his stop if he chooses or he can just drive on through. But remember, everybody else out on the racetrack, they've started to slow down right there to get down to caution lap speed. Our Nextel call of the race, there's the chirp as Nextel helps NASCAR and NASCAR fans get things done. Who's made the call of the race? Well, uh, two things. Uh, the 24 to me, I mean, Steve Letart did a great job of going ahead and making his pit stop. Jeff Gordon did a great job of not panicking and driving on through the pit and being at the back. No question. I'm going to go with a car that hadn't had a top 10 since Martinsville last October. Bobby Labonte, the 43 car, that group up there in the top 10 in ninth. I'm going to take Denny Hamlin because Mike Ford has done a great job of helping his driver get back to the front. Now, here's a turn of events that will take a little explaining. Jeff Gordon was on pit road when the caution came out. You saw him complete his stop, get back on track ahead of the pace car, so he's the last car on the lead lap. The next time around, while we're in commercial, all of the lead lap cars pit, leaving Gordon to come up behind the pace car as the race leader. His rabbit's foot <laughs> is hopping along. You could not have called it any better to have him pit stop when the flag waves for caution and emerge as the leader, but he did. It's the perfect storm. I mean, you yes. could not have nailed it any better. But now he has a little problem between him and that pace car. Kurt Busch in the two, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight, Martin Truex Jr. in the one. Remember, they, those were all cars that made green flag stops. So when this caution came out and everyone pitted, they stayed out. So they're at the tail end of the lead lap right now. Jeff Gordon, the fourth car in line, the leader. Here's a look at your Napa race summary with 20 laps to go. I actually don't think those cars are a problem other than if they hold him up and they're not. They're good race cars. They won't. But them being in front of him could give Tony Stewart and Matt Kenseth a real shot at getting around him. Pick the wrong line, go high, everybody goes low. You go low, everybody goes high, you could be in big trouble. There is Jeff Gordon, not directly behind the pace car because those cars on the outside lane, they were a lap down when they made when the caution came out, but because all the lead lap cars pitted, they are now on the tail end of the lead lap. Kurt Bushdale Jr. and Martin Truex. We're coming to green with 19 to go from our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam. And as you can see, nobody's gonna cut him any slack. Uh, Jeff Gordon. Martin Trex going to race him hard, trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap. And so will Tony Stewart ride on Gordon's bumper. Saturday night shootout, 18 to go. Yeah, you better believe those three cars trying to race to stay on the lead lap. Truex, Earnhardt, and Bush, they need a caution. And Earnhardt Jr. is up on that wheel right now. There were four wide mid-pack, and Montoya brushed up against the wall and fell all the way to the back of the pack. 
I think he got so much debris on his tires, he thought he had a tire down. I don't believe he does, but he can't turn. Mr. Ham, you're good. Probably got a ton of stuff on your tires. You're all right. Didn't know you it could go clear. four wide here, Daryl. But there it is. When there's 20 to go, you can. Right there. And look at Hamlin shoot through there in the 11. Got to go, baby. Got to go. Denny Hamlin is up to fourth. What a rocket ride back to the front for Hamlin, who was 31st after the penalty at lap 102. Yeah, he capitalized and made a pass for the fourth position over Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. What I was saying on these restarts, man, you go the wrong line, you get boxed, especially off a of turn two. Because as you saw, you can't run three or four wide over there. It opens up that much. Hendrick Chevy's first, fifth, and sixth. Gibbs Chevrolet's second and fourth. The Roush Fenway Ford of Kenseth in third. Well, and Jeff I'm... Gordon has put a little bit of space between he and Tony Stewart, but he has his hands full right now with that one car, 2X Junior. Yeah, nobody's going to, you know, you got to try to, the tricks, you got to try to stay on the, uh, on the lead lap if he can, and so far he can. Tony's loving this. But Jeff Gordon's. Ah, he's not going to be still driving forward. <laughs> Jeff Gordon's not a happy man. No. Oh, no. And he's no. got to go. Or Tony Stewart will. Here comes that 11 car there on the right side of your screen. Denny Hamlin going after Matt Kenseth in that 17 for the third spot. I believe he got him going down into one. He got position on him. Whoa, Tony. Three, three wide. wide. No. Somebody's going to have to give, boys, before you get to turn three. Stewart's going to try to stay in it on the high side. Did it, man. <laughs> Truex. Truex had to lift out a little bit, open the door. Wow, what a move. That he was took the lead. You can do that off of that corner over there if you're brave. That was unbelievable. I don't think that the 24 is real happy with anybody right now. 13 to go. Jeff Gordon says, you can't do that to me. Look how loose Stewart is off the corner. Gordon's coming right back at him on the inside. Oh, yeah, but they got trouble with that. Uh, well, that's Truex right there. The 11 is back there a little further. Gordon goes to the inside. No what? more Mr. Nice Guy. Oh, boy. But, boy, he got a good bite off turn four. He's going to take the lead back. 12 to go. <laughs> this is great, isn't it? And Kenseth now is right with the two leaders. Look at that yellow 17. There's your front three. I don't think O Smoke is through with uh, the back bumper of that 24 car just yet. And here comes that 17 car, Matt Kenseth. He says, you guys keep going at it. I want up there. Stewart had a bite of the lead and a taste of it. Now he wants that whole stake. Boy, I tell you, I, I am impressed with Jeff Gordon. No quit in him tonight. He wants to win the race not only from the pole, but for the first time, and he has got a car that can do it. He's tired of running second with the car tomorrow. And they are starting to put some distance on Denny Hamlin in fourth place. He's got a little bit of room in front of him now. It's quite a ways up there to those other cars. 11 to go, 10 to go this time. Well, Jeff Gordon has just run a 28.45. That's four or five, that's six tenths quicker than he ran any time tonight. He is the money man. Those two passes were just incredible. First, Stewart right up the middle. I didn't think those three cars would fit right <laughs> there. You got to give Truex a lot of credit, though. He yep. squeezed up and made just enough room for the two leaders to get through. He, he finally realized that, that 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 was enough. He fought as hard as he could, but when it was time to get out of the way, he did. And all Stewart did was get Jeff Gordon right back up on the wheel. Oh yeah, Jeff didn't like that. I'm gonna get that boy. Great racing. You know, I think I found something to like about the car tomorrow. It gets pretty racy. <laughs> the finishes we've had with these car tomorrow races. And there, Denny Hamlin in the 11. He gets Matt Kenseth for the third spot. Here comes Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car. This is third, fourth, and fifth right here. I don't believe they got anything for the 24, though. He's uh, checking on out on these guys. And here comes Jimmy Johnson looking under Matt Kenseth. Fourth place here. Hamlin up for third, eight laps to go. Got to give a lot of credit to Matt Kenseth. I mean, there's the Ford up there, the only one in. The next closest Ford is 11th, the Carl Edwards. Now, this is a battle for six right here. Jeff Green in the 66, Kyle Busch in the five. That 66 car has been so good all night long. 
this just might be the best race Jeff Green has had since his return to Nextel Cup a couple of seasons well, ago. Well, you know, we say that, but, man, that sixth-place finish he had at Bristol was pretty dadgum impressive, and he's backing it up right here tonight with another sixth-place run. I think at this point, the two giants up front, Gordon and Stewart, I think they said, okay, I gave you my best shot. You got it. Well, one thing we know about this car tomorrow, Darrell, the best drivers are still the best drivers, and the smartest teams are still the smartest teams. That's who's up front. And the man up front right now, Jeff Gordon, the 24 car. Remember, he's our next Dell Cup points leader. It'll be five to go. You can see the distance he's now put on Tony Stewart in his 20. And, Mike, that's the same yesterday, today, and it will be the same tomorrow. I know we're watching our top five right now, but we talked about Jeff Green in the 66 car. His teammate, Johnny right Sauter, the 70, up there in the top 10 in ninth. Great run for Haas Racing tonight. I think uh, Jeff Gordon right now, though, guys, think about it. Nobody's won this race from a pole. He's probably going to do it. Jeff Gordon's never won at Phoenix. He's probably going to do it. And guess what else he's going to do? Ty Dale Earnhardt for 70, what is it, six wins. So tonight, in this weekend, he tied for the most poles in the modern era, and he's going to tie Dale Earnhardt for wins. Funny that today, no, Dale Earnhardt was born in April 1951. They'll celebrate Dale Earnhardt Day of DEI. Jeff Gordon is four laps away. And there is the all-time win list headed by the King, Richard Petty. And those are the all-time greats of this sport right there. Passing David Stremme's wounded car. These cars up front right now are so equal. 87 on Gordon, 83 on Stewart. Hamlin's in 81, Jimmy Johnson's in 83. That's your lead card. Everybody's in the 80s. The same speed. Two laps to go this time. I tell you, Smoke is going to give it one more shot, but I don't think he's got enough to get there. And nobody can say this was a cakewalk for Jeff Gordon. He had to fight hey, his way to back. A little bit more right there for you. White flag when you get down here. I mean, just how solid this group has been all year long. If they hang on in the top five, this right here. I, I'm not trying to start anything here, guys, but that right rear tire on that 24 car looks soft. I guess it didn't. But I know one thing, Stewart is closing in a hurry. He's got a half a lap to go, Mike. I guess Jeff is just being that cautious, but I thought I saw that right rear tire look like it was a little soft. Jeff Gordon rounds turn four become the first driver in the history of Phoenix International Raceway to win a cup race from the pole. Jeff Gordon finally gets his first Phoenix win and ties Dale Earnhardt. Jeff Gordon, I got a special flag for you. At the start finish line, if you want it, bud, come and get it. Special flag. Look at the hats if you want an indication of, of what that flag says. A pretty good idea of what it would say.
Chevy congratulates Jeff Gordon, winner of the Subway Fresh Fit 500. Chevy, an American Revolution. As Jeff Gordon salutes the Richard Childress owned at number three as it was driven by Dale Earnhardt to six of his seven. Next Dell Cup championships tonight. Gordon ties Earnhardt for career wins in next Dell Cup racing. And I don't think there's any question. We've known for years that Jeff Gordon's going to rewrite the record book. I mean, he's a young man. He's still got a lot of racing ahead of him, a lot of wins, championships. We always knew he would rewrite the record books. Three races for NASCAR's car of tomorrow. Jeff Gordon's finishes third, second, and tonight, first. Since last July, he's been chasing that 76 victory. Tonight is special. His first one here at Phoenix in a cup car. You've already talked to the boss. Dale Earnhardt Jr. came by to congratulate you. What does number 76 mean to you? Yeah, it means the world. Uh, you know, just to get a win at a track we never won at before. I, I drove my guts. I never had to drive so hard for a, a win. And uh, I love racing Tony Stewart and, and Jimmy and uh, all those guys who are racing there. And, uh, you know, that, holding that three flag, uh, you know, it's certainly by no means say we're I'm as good or we're as good or, or even close. But uh, I tell you what, to honor him in, the, in that way, it, it really means a lot to me. I, I learned so much from him. And to even come close to anything he had ever done in this sport is amazing to me. So we want to honor him. We've been holding on that flag for a long time. But to get 76 is incredible. I got to thank everybody from DuPont and Pepsi and, uh, you know, GMAC. Uh, oh, I got, I, I'm so fired up here. Obviously, uh, Pepsi, Nicorette. Uh, I think GP everybody's and, uh, fired up. I mean, oh, man, starting from when this car fired up and you had radio problems to the great call by Steve Letarte when you were on pit road and the caution came out. It just seemed like everything was in the cards for you tonight. Yeah, it seemed like it. I mean, we didn't lead a ton, but we had a good car. And, you know, I would go for a long way and be one of the best cars, and then it'd fall off a little bit. And we kept adjusting, adjusting. Great communication. Luckily, I had a radio. We switched that helmet out. It all did fall on our, our lap. Uh, you know, we got lucky getting on pit road when the caution came out, but I thought we needed to keep going through, and I almost drove through the pit. And uh, Steve made the call, and I love him as a crew chief. He's an awesome guy, and he's sharp as can be. And he made that call. You know, he, he talked to the to the spotter and talked to me and the team, and, you know, he just he's so cool under pressure. And, uh, man, it's just an awesome, awesome feeling. Great to get uh, Chevy and Impala in here. Um, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm overwhelmed right now. It's just an amazing victory for us. And uh, I can't believe we finally won at Phoenix.